Hello and welcome here for another healing story. Today we've got Brian Jones. I'm so excited because you, we're kind of very special in a way because it, it, it seems to because last week we actually talked about the book of uh, the highly sensitive person. And I know you talk a lot about this on, on, in your videos and, and you, you are a highly sensitive person yourself. So I think it, it's really mm-hmm. beautiful that you're coming on here and, and sharing your story uh, with us, how, how you dealt with that and what what's been working for you because i i know there's so many highly sensitive people out there who have had a lot of trauma in in their lives so thank you so much for being here with us thank you so much for having me i mean this is an amazing thing this is an amazing opportunity and uh i can't wait to get started yeah beautiful would you like to share with us a, a little bit where where you were at like what was the, the your main symptoms or what did your life look like before you started that healing journey? Yeah. Um, so, you know, CPTSD is something that um, I suffered from, suffer from. And I'd say the, the symptoms that I would see were a, a lot of triggering emotional, emotional flashbacks and triggers. Mm-hmm. Um, I also struggled with, not being able to feel my emotions. Um, I didn't really know who I was. And that's a really scary thing. Mm. Um, you know, not, not really knowing who you are deep down and at your core, mm. not knowing your, like, I didn't even really know the term beliefs and values, nor did I know what, what mine were. Yeah. Um, I didn't know my personality type. I didn't yeah. know my strengths and my weaknesses. I didn't know what hobbies I liked. Um, and I didn't know my purpose in life. Mm, and that's all. Relate. Work yeah. Yeah. Mm. So that's all the things that I would say. And, and when that starts to build up and build up and build up, eventually it's like a balloon and it pops. Mm. And my balloon popped. Mm. And it was time to go and, and get some, some help and support. Yeah. And that's what I did. Yeah. And it takes a lot of courage, isn't it? Because especially when you had it, a lot it, of trauma, when you didn't have growing up some people, adult figures in your life that you could reach out and trust that mm-hmm. you know, there is someone there who's helping me now in adult, like, you, you, there's a lot of resistance well, for me there was a lot of resistance I didn't want anyone to help me I'm going to do this by myself yes. <laughs> so I I remember my first therapy appointment and it was over the phone actually and I, I my hand was physically shaking yes on the phone call and I wasn't even in an office with a therapist mm-hmm. I was just in my home shaking on the phone and then the first time I met, I met her face to face, I was shaking again, even though we had talked for months prior to that. Mm. Uh, and then eventually, uh, as healing went on, um, I was very lucky to get a great therapist. Yes. And from the, from the start. Yeah. Um, so that was great. And then, you know, I was able to also get a really good coach from the start. So I think a lot, in a lot of ways, I was lucky. Or maybe I just did my research. I did my homework mm. because I picked my therapist. I used the BetterHelp app and you can actually see all their stuff. And I was actually the, physically, because I had a couple of choices prior to that, it's assigned me. And I chose the one that I actually ended up with and mm. she it fit all the stuff. And I was like, that's, she, she's the one. Oh. And right. So I'm so glad you, you mentioned it. I think this is, one of the most important things because it needs to be a person where we have some kind of sense that I connect with that we are on the same kind of right. lengths. I I can I think I can learn to trust you, you know, because there's some people that we see as a like, rule and you instantly don't want to talk to that person. And if if this is your assigned therapist, then it's gonna be very difficult. So I think mm-hmm. it's really important that we a part of that choice and it's it's beautiful that you did that on a on a better help app because they get very mixed um <laughs> reviews from that app so it worked really nice for you it, yeah it worked it worked 
it worked great for me. I, yeah. I was just very lucky in that whole sense. And, I, you know, I, I'm so grateful that I had an experience like that because had I not, mm. I don't know, you know, I don't know that I would have eventually, I would, I don't, cause I was so afraid. Yeah. And to this day, I mean, you know, it, it was the CPTSD that made me so afraid because mm-hmm. why would I be afraid of a therapist? Mm. They're there to help you. Yes. And, you know, mm. that's what it was, but I'm glad yeah. I got through that. Yeah. And I often wonder whether that, that, that part of being a highly sensitive person, you're ma- more intuitive, you more, you can sense people better, that this can actually be a benefit or of value to you when you're picking a therapist. Let that intuition, let that guide you if you're a highly sensitive person. Anyone listen? Yes. <laughs> I think right, right, right. I mean, as of, like right now, even talking with you, like you know, mm. I I've already analyzed everything. Yes. It's just natural to me, and it's not it's not anything against you. I do it with everybody, including myself. But <laughs> yes, you know, because you you know, um, and I and I don't think it's because I don't trust people. It's just because, especially in that sense, when you're talking about, about things that I was talking about, you know. I, uh, it, it's so funny because my therapist, she actually would, um, she knew how highly sensitive I was, although she never said it to me. The one day she, we always met and she, we, she sat on the chair. And then the one day I came in, she sat on the couch and I was like, what, what are you doing? You sit there. And she started laughing and she was just trying to show me how highly sensitive I really am and how much I notice things and observe. And it was just, it was just a great way to do it because, um, and she was, she's actually the same way. She, it, it ended up being that she is also highly sensitive. Um, so yes, that's what she was trying to show me. And that was a really special moment between her and I. That was, that was great. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's beautiful to have a, yeah, that, that therapist where you realize, yeah, we, we, we understand each other. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. And was there anything in particular that you found really helpful at, at the beginning, like with your therapist? Did you, did you use a specific style or did you have some practice? I, or? CBT, is that what that's called? Cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy? Is that what yes. it's called? Yeah. That's what we did. And that seemed to mm-hmm. help because I think that is what is used to, and correct me if I'm wrong here, to treat just PTT, PTSD. Mm-hmm. And that's what she was using because she actually had diagnosed me with PTSD from the start. And I was so confused because I was like, I, I wasn't in the military. I didn't go to war yeah. or anything like that. I didn't have an experience, car accident, something like that. She's like, well, it's more complicated than that, right? Yes. But she, you know, we didn't talk about actually CPTSD, but she was beating around that bush quite a bit. Yes. And um, yeah, the one major thing that she helped me with that we worked on is getting in touch with my emotions again. Mm. And all it took was this, like this worksheet that she sent me. And it was, it, it, what it did was it just divided your emotions into like five categories shame anger words joy words love words and sadness sadness words or some, something along those lines yeah. and it broke them all down and they wrote the and i'm like oh at first i was like i'm feeling a sadness word right now mm. and then i went to the list and i'm like i'm feeling this one right now yes you know and i know that sounds it kind of sounds a little childish But it's honestly what I needed because I was back at that at that time when I was a child, I'd say. Yes. And then I started to naturally just put emotions with different music, like songs that I liked or bands or artists, Mm -hmm. because I'm really into music. And that helped me even more to understand what I was feeling and what was going on inside. And that was probably the biggest takeaway I, I got from therapy. Mm. Yes. So glad you mentioned that. That's, um, was it um, Alexis Thymia, I think. I did in my video on that, but so many of us, because we missed that milestone, not just emotional regulation, it's, it's 
actually knowing what that feeling is that I'm feeling. So right. For many of right. adult to learn emotions from the textbook, you know, or oh, these butterflies right. could mean that I am a little bit nervous or maybe it's excited. Right. Know? So it's, right. it's, it, it's learning that it's a, it's a new language. Right. In a, in a way. And, and then I was able to, then I got into like coaching and all. Yes. And I had a life coach who, who specialized in CPTSD recovery and, you know, narcissistic abuse. And that's just what I really needed at that time. I was still doing therapy once a week, yes. but I was also doing the coaching. And then I got into group coaching with her, met other people that were similar to me mm -hmm. that, that we've gone through similar situations, ex life experiences. Some people that were, I noticed that were empaths, HSPs, yes. and that's just a great environment. Yes. And um, that's where my healing, I think, like it was from therapy and then it just went skyrocketing up from coaching because I that mm. style is just I love like future focused like, um, mm. you know, uh, but by still being in the present, uh, but future focused in the sense that like, yes. all right, well, let's, you know, we, we can move on from this. We can get through this mm. type thing in a motivating yes. way. It's so important. So, so many people um, are very critical around coaching, but I, I'm I'm very similar. I only work with coaches these days. I don't like for myself. I still work on myself. I think this is a lifelong journey. I love having coaches on yep. my side, whether they're spiritual coaches or or, or yep. for, what, whatever you know, different yep. different. They're empowering people. Seasons of my life, I choose different things, but it's the focus, isn't it? I still know yeah. there's stuff in the past, but I don't want my whole day to be around this, my whole big focus. There's exactly. an aspect that goes there to help me process and and, and close that. But then yes. most of the time I want to live here with a focus to the future. Who do I want to become? Yes. And coaching has that different right. focus. Yeah. I, I always, right. I, I, I love that because I, but my, I think my psychiatrist did a lot of the both. He did the therapy and the coaching together. I think this is, and That's great. I've had um, coaches along the way. Yeah, it's. I, I really wish more people would understand the difference there. That we can't move forward when we're only looking back. Like one of my psychologists gave me that um, analogy once. You're sitting in a car. You can't drive forward if you're only focusing on the revision mirror. And it just stuck in my head. It's like if I 100% right. focus on my past. I can't get, I can't create a more happy life because I'm, I'm so focused right. on all the, the, the trauma. And, yeah. But yeah, uh, and there was, a, there was a part of me that I had to acknowledge that past because yes. you kind of do, you have to yes. acknowledge it eventually. And I, I don't know what else. I, I think that's pretty much what you have to do is like what I did, yes. but that, that your past definitely does not define it. No, no. What, what defines you, I think, as a person is what you're doing right now and what you're going to do in the future. And that's that's what defines you. Yeah. And it's beautiful to have that therapist to have it there and they can actually acknowledge, acknowledge that with you and, and validate that with you, that this was bad, uh -huh. this was wrong, and this should not have happened to you. And no, no child is to right. that. And once you get that it's like, oh, okay, then you don't need to do that much more. Some people feel like they have to go and process every single uh, event. Right. Like, no, 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 you don't. You just mm -hmm. need to get that concept. <laughs> and then you no. kind of uh, shift the focus. Yeah. Yes. Well, you just touched on something really important about therapy is like the validation piece. I, mm -hmm. I really, that's something I really, really needed because I, I just yes. simply was not getting it. Yes. And, and also a big part of the healing is, is me working on current relationships and current friendships and everything. Mm. And so my relationship with others and my relationship with myself. Yes. That's where I've been. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I think the, that, that, that was the harder one. My, oh, I, I, that's what I kept telling myself that it's harder to work on my own relationship than, than with other people. But Really, when you it is. in relationship, you know, the, the relationship with your friends elevates as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that's actually like more. That's the you know, being an extroverted person, like I can 
you know, work with others and stuff like that, even though it was a little difficult at first, like the boundary setting thing, boundaries was another big thing that I just, yes. I just simply didn't have. I didn't really even know what they were. Yes. And um, beliefs and values, that was a big one. I, as a matter of fact, I actually post on my wall by my door, my top 20 beliefs and values. So I pass them every day. And, I ch- and they, they change throughout time. So I usually update them every six months I've been doing and I date it. Mm. So it's been working because it like, oh yeah, that's what I'm, you know, that's what I'm working towards. Because if you don't know, if, if you don't know, like think about a vast ocean, like if you don't know where your heading is, where you're headed, how, how where are you going to point yourself in life? Mm. And I believe beliefs and values kind of set you up initially, at least to be able to set yourself up to which direction you went ahead. Yeah. That's just how I think about it. Yes. It's so true. It's, it's like a guiding star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Or like a compass. You know, I keep going back to like Pirates of the Caribbean with the compass and everything. You know, mm-hmm. that's what I think about all the, all the time. Um, like, you know, it, it points to what you most want in life. That's what his compass th- did in the movie. And the reality is we don't have a compass like that. We have to be our own compass. Mm. We have to point ourselves in the right direction. Mm. So true. Let me just fix this. There you go. Yeah, you went blurry. I was like, am I seeing things? I'm like, but yeah, so I mean, um, and hobbies, I think, are so, you know, not having hobbies, that. Yeah. And personality type, you know, I did all those personality tests and stuff like that. That's what I first started with. I needed some kind of base. Yes. And that's what I started with. And I'm so happy that I was, and and I did that on my own, actually. Um, And call it luck. I don't know what it was, but I, you know, I was, I was begging to know who I was. Yes. Um, And like, you know, I'm sure you can relate to that. Like not like that's, that's just a a gut-wrenching feeling, not even knowing who you are. And at the time I was like 30, 30 years old. And I'm like, shouldn't I know who I am by now? But I didn't. And I had to accept that and I had to do something about it. So Mm -hmm. I did. And I have. Yeah. So true. Not not even knowing, like I said, your likes or dislikes or hobbies is like, what am I interested in? I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> like a hobby well I guess I can collect yeah. coins or something I don't know that sounds kind of boring but but then I kind of you know went back to the drawing board and I and I was like you know I locked in on music music something mm-hmm. I like, I really really just am, I enjoy music that's really how I express myself and mm-hmm. I started learning how to play the guitar I've been practicing singing um you know I've always been into like I did musical theater in like high school and in college and a little bit in college yes. mostly in high school and I re- went back to that and I'm like, that's when I experienced joy. I had that joy built up inside of me. Well, then that's what I'm going to do again. Mm. And, um, you know, that's what I've been kind of working on that. Plus fulfilling that, that lifelong dream of becoming a life coach as well, because yes. that is another hobby of mine. Yes. That's kind of my purpose at the same time. Yes. And it's a passion, isn't it? And it, it's, a, it's, it's a passion all the way through. Yeah. And it, and it's beautiful when, when you're finding that. But like, like I said, initially, you don't know. You you get the, the feelings bored. And it's like you weren't even aware that there was that many different feelings. And But then when you have that, it's like, okay, when I'm doing this, I'm feeling these kind right. of things more. When I'm doing that, I'm feeling that more. And do, you get to explore. It's like you're discovering yourself, isn't it? I always said it's like a self-discovery. Yeah journey right and once you do it once you're once you once you're on it I mean everyone's different listen but like for me I know from my experience I'm like once I was on that aboard that that uh that ship or that plane and I was smooth sailing at that point there was no stopping me you know and you, you, you when you're when you're doing things that are more you that you enjoy and that you love and that you're passionate about you tend to attract more people with better relationships healthier relationships as well at the same time I'm a learning yeah. and you know that's kind of when the healing comes full swing it, it's kind of oh okay now I can recognize that that's definitely a success and mm-hmm. I I, cel- I celebrate all my successes what 
no, no matter how big or small they are. That's really Beautiful. important. Like, yes, so important. I keep, I keep telling that to my people. It is. Celebrate every, the tiniest step, you know, and we're not Everything. celebrating the success. We're celebrating that you stepped outside of your comfort zone. You tried something out. It didn't work out. It's not awesome. You tried it. Celebrate it. You know, it, it's the process. It's so important to yes. that, that feel good gives you then the motivation and the inspiration inspiration and the energy to try something again next time exactly yeah. exactly well said you know mm -hmm. and and you know you just touched on something that's pretty huge is you're stepping out of your comfort zone that's really really important and you have to do it at your own pace mm. because you don't want to overwhelm yourself and you don't want to because you don't you know you don't want to get discouraged and then stop yes. especially when you've already worked so hard mm. but Stepping out of your comfort zone is kind of a must. And, you know, fortunately, I'm able to do that very aggressively. Yeah. Where I, I don't allow fear to fully control me and, and the CPTSD to, to take over in that sense. It was winning at first, yes. you know, years ago, but it's not anymore. Mm. And, and that's, that's a place where, you know, fear doesn't, no longer runs my life. Yes. Such a, and, and any emotion really, it doesn't just have to be fear. For some people, it's right. the shame that's so toxic and so intense that it stops them from doing things, right? Or whatever emotion it is, to, to, to learn that doesn't matter how intense the emotion is, it's not going to be able to kill me. It's an emotion. It's it's not dangerous. My brain is telling me this is dangerous, but it's not right. just an emotion. Right. <laughs> and it feels so exactly. bad myself. I don't if I don't <laughs> feed it. <laughs> yeah. And you just, you actually just made me remember that's the other uh, fear words is the other one that I was trying to think of on that worksheet from my therapist. Yeah. yeah. Fear words. And that really helped me because like and anxiety is on there mm -hmm. and um i forget what else the other ones are on yeah. you know frightened obviously like stuff like that um disturbed yes. all that kind of stuff's on there and and it kind of you know with cptsd it, it helped me a lot to, to determine mm -hmm. what's what and what i'm feeling and to let to let that get let let myself feel it and which is difficult mm, yes and especially being highly sensitive and yeah that was yeah difficult and still is but step out of that comfort zone yes keep pressing forward yeah and i think it, it's like like you said it, it it's totally okay like you, you said you had a worksheet it can be really helpful to have something tangible like have it on your desk have it on you know i had notes on my mirrors and bathroom doors and all doors and cupboards and things like that to remind me right. and to see the things like I said, with your value words and th those visual prompts, because initially what, what we talk about in a therapy session, when we walk out, we often can't remember. But if you have something tangible to take from it, you know, something that you exactly can, words that can exactly. be mm. Another gigantic piece was me journaling. Yes. To get for the emotions and what I was feeling at that time and, and what, yeah. you know, cause I had a lot of life changes that were, that I had a lot of stuff in my life just naturally going on at, at, at that particular time as yeah. well. But journaling really helped me to be able to express myself, get my emotions out there. Damn. I mean, there was something like you could tell I was angry now cause like they're all sloppy and like they're yes. all messy, but when I was calm, <laughs> they're all nice and neat and everything. But, mm -hmm. and, and my anger is not like, you know, it wasn't like, you know, me like bashing or like writing nasty things about people it was just me like getting things out on paper mm. and it's odd that the body needs that release and journaling for me I was able to get that release mm. it's so anger when people hear anger that they, they have an, an there's a negativity associated there's a healthy part of anger Every emotion we we need, every emotion has a yeah. message for us, right? And it's okay right. to have anger. It can be healthy if we express it in a, like a non-destructive way. <laughs> if someone does something hurtful to you, yes. you are allowed to be angry. Yes. You're allowed to be angry. And that's how you 
handle that anger mm. and process it. That's key. Yes. Um, yes. We really want to let the energy out. We don't want to push it down. Because some people, for the time, I couldn't feel angry. And it's not. it wasn't a, a safe emotion for a lot of people to express at home growing up. So they're pushing it inward. And when we keep that trap, there's so much energy, such a high uh, anger is such a high energy kind of emotion. Right. And when you keep a trap, that's when our bodies start getting sick then. And then we um, have all sorts of other issues. Yeah. Here right. We- and are you familiar with Mr. Rogers at all? This the guy, Mr. Rod, Mr. Rogers, he had like a, a, a children's show for years and years and years like one of the sweetest men to ever live when he was alive. And they did a movie about him. And in the movie, he said to the other person in the movie, he's like, I even experienced anger. And he's like, the that was the kindest man ever. And yes. what he said, when he experiences anger, he bangs on his piano. He goes, ah. that's his anger coming out. So like even yeah. Mr. Rogers on the ch- famous children's show for years and years and years, the kindest man ever to live. One of them, should I say? experienced yeah. anger yeah. and that's how he released it so mm-hmm. it goes to show you yeah. you're out and in yes definitely there's a every yeah i always say every emotion has a message for us and and for anger it's often that someone uh violates your boundaries right you're gonna be curious when when you get angry it's like oh what's where is my frustration body? too? Yeah. It's frustrating. Right. Frustration was a big key emotion for me under those anger words. Mm. Um, and it still is to this day that brings up anger because I, when I get frustrated, it leads to anger. And, you know, that's just no way to live your life. Yes. Um, yes. So it's really beautiful. I, I admire you the way you, you use all your hobbies and things like that to really explore. It's like, who am I? What do I like? You know, and how can yeah. I? different emotions into my life so yeah, it's a really beautiful journey yeah yeah it's just been it's actually been fun it's been a blast yeah I mean that part of it has really I mean it's it's been really fun it was hard at first but now that I, like when you bust through that yes. wall enough now it gets fun I mean for me at least yes and you know getting into coaching now I'm able to coach myself that's yes. even more fun yes that, that's in what isn't it and the, the the beginning part is really hard and ugly and confusing and chaos but once you get through this it, it, it's a phase i always say it doesn't test last forever it's a phase we need to get through on our healing journey but it right it, it, you can actually make healing fun it's, it's right a, and, and enjoyable it, it, yeah it, sorry i didn't mean to cut you off cut you off no. there but it, you know in the beginning of my healing journey it was tough to see that light at the end of the tunnel, Mm. but I assure you that light it's there. It's most likely on. You just can't see it yet. And that's okay. But it's busting through those walls. Like we're talking about those barriers, those obstacles, um, and stepping out of that comfort zone that allows you to begin to see that light. And once Mm -hmm. you see that light, it's glorious and it's bright. From the yes. start and it might not still be in your reach but you can get there and you yeah. will get there yeah just like we did and just like yeah. we are yes and, and so- healing is not, healing is not linear. what's that and, and celebrating all the way along <laughs> yes yes yeah. celebrate everything yeah um as much as you can yeah and um so beautiful enjoy it yes you know, enjoy it as much as you possibly can. And, and, and I think it's important to, to find other people that are like you mm. in a sense. Would you agree with that? Like mm. that are just similar to you mm. because I didn't really have anybody in my life like that. And mm. I had a ton of friends and unfortunately a lot of those relationships have, have fizzled out and they needed to. And it's yeah. okay. I've accepted that being highly sensitive. It was, that was really hard for me at first too. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm meeting a lot more people that are just, just better people Yes. that are more my people, mm. um, even meeting you, even meeting yeah. you. I mean, seriously, like it, 
I don't think that if I had healed and I don't know that I would have necessarily been able to cross paths with someone like you. And I'm just so grateful, so happy that I did. And I have. Thank you. And Thank I, I'm, I'm kind of seeing that a lot in other people um, not through coaching that I've met and, and just, mm -hmm. you know, even if, even if it's someone long distance, call them on the phone. That's mm -hmm. what technology is for. Zoom with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's why I created the, the Thriver Road community. It's an online community where we yeah, meet that's just, on Zoom, that's just you know, all like my That's just an unbelievable idea. Yeah. I love it. It's yeah. just such a great thing that you're doing Thank with you. people. Uh, but, and, it, and it doesn't all have to be around healing or because that's that that group is very focused on on that self-development and self-discovery and self-mastery kind right. of groups. But you can also find like-minded people like with any hobby as well, like you said, with music or maybe it's a sport or maybe, maybe it's knitting. It doesn't matter to, to have right. a few different groups. So not everything becomes about working on yourself. Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. We always go to come back. It's like, I am actually worthy as I am right now. I am lovable as I am. I am accepted. You know, accepting myself as I am right now. Right now, right. Yes, and 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 still, yeah, I like to improve. You know, I like to be a little bit kind. I like to be even more non-judging. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah, I think I hear that. I I always think like of myself. No, I don't judge. And then you hear something about the politicians, and then my mind goes like, Oh, so you don't want to judge. <laughs> I'm like, oh, get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of those experiences the other day where I, it wasn't about politicians, but it was about some, I can't remember what it was about, but I was like, yeah. Brian, no, don't say that. <laughs> right, so don't even go there. Yeah. And, and you know, like the, the, to catch yourself, isn't it? And but you catching yourself, not beating yourself up. It's catching yourself and being kind. Oh, okay. I, I just did that. I'm, I'm human. Okay. I judged. It's okay. Yeah. exactly yes. exactly and i have the seven yeah. rules of life like hanging right on my wall here and I, I believe so the one is um what others think of you is none of your business that's huge and i believe there was one other one about not judging people on where they're at in their journeys i, I can't really see that fully but you know that's huge like, and accepting where you're at in yours too yes Yes. And everyone's different, you know, um, but, you know, that that's just a, um, that's been basically my healing journey. I mean, to, to up until this point and, you know, the yeah. next biggest step, Tanya, for me. And I keep saying, like, oh, you know, it, it, and I don't even know when you fully know when you're healed, per se, like healed. Yes. But, you know, I'm actually enjoying this journey. So mm. I, I am. I don't really want to get off the train. I want to keep going. And I think the next step well, for me, at least, is to start, you know, my business, my, my coaching yeah. business, which is something I'm not too far away from. And, yes, you know, I'm creating, I'm actually like, you know, part of my personality type when I first, you know, was doing those tests and like learning about that stuff. One of my strengths was creativity. And I'm like, yes. I'm not creative. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have any creativity. Yes. I am, cre I am a creative person, though, come to find out, just in a different way than I was thinking. I mm. created my own YouTube channel. Yes. That's being creative. Yes. And it's been a blast. I'm having yes. a blast doing it now. Yeah. And, and, and if you, you know, I think that's... I'll be down below in the description is going to be the link to um, Brian's YouTube channel because you talk a lot about highly sensitive people. And I think it's a really in, yeah. uh, important topic for people. So if you want to watch some YouTube videos on that with Brian, you can, there's going to be a link down below for you to, to click on. Screen. Yes, yes, yes. And I thank you for doing that. Um, yeah, highly sensitive people mm -hmm. and, and, and past as well. Um, and just, do, just my journey, my healing journey, yes. because... You know, it's important to get that stuff out there. That's why I, I can't thank you enough, Tanya, for um, for allowing people to share like this. It's it's yeah. um, very special. Thank you, thank you. And I think it's it's important because when when for for myself when I was in that really dark phase, I didn't. I think that was going to be my life. I thought this is it. I'm too broken and I'm too damaged. Nothing's ever going to change. And it was right. when I met someone else that was further along that journey and they had joy that I said, oh people do get better you know so now when right. I have these things to to spark some 
you know, hope for people that, that things will get better. And, and Can't lose hope. I have people to keep going. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Can't lose hope. Yeah. So thank you so much to you for, for making the time and coming here and, and sharing your journey. It's um, absolutely it's my and, pleasure. And yes, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I'm sure we'll see each other out there on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hopefully. Don't be a stranger. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.